Welcome, everyone, to another episode of As Told by Nomads, and today's guest is Jason Sweden. Now, Jason has taught over 10,500 students and businesses how to overcome and break through their financial barriers. A lot of them have reached a six and even seven figure mark, and we're going to be discussing just how you listening out there can do the same for yourself. Now, when you listen to this episode, we would have been in the third month of 2022. So at this point, this is usually around the time when your goals start to peter out. Some people will have this high excitement entering the new year and all of a sudden February is done and they're like, ah. so hopefully this is a good pick me up. And without further ado, welcome to the show, Jason. Yo, what's up? How you doing? Hey, How are you? everything all right? Yeah, I can't complain. To, you know, I, I, like I was saying to you earlier, it's a good day to be alive. But I'm also really excited about what you're discussing, especially even us being black men. I think it's interesting diving into the the topic of financial freedom, financial literacy, and uh, you know, your generational wealth. So I'm curious, what got you down this path? Being broke. <laughs> okay, simple enough. You were broke pursuing your dreams though right you 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 were master piano player full-time yeah. musician yeah break it down so i guess my broke doesn't feel like I, I was broke in um in the sense of i felt like the top of what i wanted to do wasn't good enough mm. so if you're a musician or anybody knows a musician you know that if you work five six nights a, a week you're gonna do pretty good as a musician. So as a musician, I was maybe making about somewhere between $8,500 and $10,000 a month. And that's only on my instrument, playing keys and singing. That's it. Um, I was playing basically every night I wanted to play. And uh, I was making a good living. It's not a bad living, but I started looking around and seeing what the top of the top looked like. And the probability of getting there, for example, Everybody, if you're listening to this right now, maybe you know somebody who can sing or make music, right? But the way that our music industry was set up, it's not so much these days, but the way it was set up was like, you're only going to get one Beyonce at a time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that other lady could very well have been very talented and could sing and could dance. But when you talk about, you know, really closing the gap it was going to be really difficult for anybody else to do and it's the same thing you know when Pharrell had the hot sound as a producer no other producer could eat uh Timberland had that Danger Hands had that and everybody you know throughout time now you got 40 and Ali and you got um all these other fantastic drummer boy and all these great other producers that's making a lot of money making mm -hmm. music yeah it doesn't really let everybody make money you know what I'm saying it's almost like you got to wait your turn and I thought about waiting my turn until my magical time came where I would be able to be a great producer and make millions. And I felt like it was too probabilistically low. Like I shouldn't let somebody else have the right to tell me whether or not I could make money this day. Uh, that was as a producer, as a musician, as a singer. I was a part of what you would call the gig economy. And that if you're a barber or you... Um, uh, maybe change tires or something like that. You know, you're basically offering a service to somebody and that person has got to elect you to perform the service for them. If you're a surgeon, somebody has got to come to you for surgery. If you're a barber, somebody has got to say, you're the barber I want. And of course, if you're a musician, then that means they have to say, hey, I want a musician. Not only do I want a musician, but I want Jay to play for me this day. Well, that's too much control in somebody else's hands on whether or not I'm going to make money. Like I need people that need music, need live music, and then choose me. And I would sit there and wait with my talent and hopefully they would select me. To me, it felt like everything was out of my hands. I could be the best musician and still somebody else choose somebody else. Like they, they book somebody else on the gig or they choose somebody else's record instead of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember one time we were working on Neo's album at Circle House. Circle House is a studio. We were working on Neo's album, man. And we submitted maybe 10 records and they were all great. Neo took none of them. They oh, were wow. all great records, like beautiful records. Neo took none of them. So that was that. And I was like, yo, this can't be life. Like if, <laughs> it can't be life. Like I can't give you what I know is dope and you turn it, uh, no, I'm not living like that. So, you know, fast forward a little while and I found this thing called trading and that was it. 
Now it's me versus me and only me. And it's dependent upon me. And I like that. You found a way to live life on your own terms. I found a way to make money on my own terms. You, you know what? Appreciate that correction. You found a way <laughs> to make money on your own terms. Yeah. It, so trading though, the journey to trading, you, you had this, this um, moment with, with Neo's uh, our upcoming album and then he chose none of your songs and then you found trading but what who introduced trading to you i was going to play golf in atlanta and a guy a friend of mine he's a frat brother of mine i'm not sure if anybody knows about fraternities or anything like that but i'm uh um, i'm a part of a fraternity called omega sapphire and it's my frat brother and um he was looking at what i called at the time squiggly lines i said what are those squiggly lines on New York on computer. And uh, that was it. That was all I needed. The type of person I think I am, and I think I got this from being a musician, but yeah. it's like, I'm going to go find it. Like, if you tell me, cool, but if you don't, it's okay. Like, I'll go find. Like, they have Google encyclopedias, libraries, books. They have whatever is out there. All I need is for somebody to kind of almost point maybe me in the general vicinity of like what I think success looks like and I'm going to go making mistakes until I find it and that's basically what happened so I asked him what that was he said uh I'm trading and I was like well what's that he was just like oh you just know which direction it's going to go and then you can make money I was like what mm -hmm. you need to go up or down I'm gonna be right 50 percent of the time and I haven't learned anything I like this you know what I'm saying? 50% of my songs don't get selected. I don't get 50% of the gigs that I'm up for. So if I can be right 50% of the time and I'm starting right now and I don't know anything, but I know things can go up or down, so far so good. I like this game. So I just start getting into it. You, you already used to playing the odds. <laughs> already. 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 I'm an odds guy. So, okay. There are people out there who have heard trading, but they don't, they don't know what it is. If people out there who heard trading, but they fear what it is because they've heard the horror stories. For anyone listening right now, when you're saying trading, what exactly are you referring to? Is it stock market, bonds, crypto? What are, what are we talking okay, about? Okay, cool. Everybody understands trading, but everybody doesn't. All right. So let's act like everybody who's listening to this, Tayo, let's act like you guys are from Mars. All right. So if you're from Mars, this is what you can do. Right. You can know this thing called the market. What is the market? A market is any place that facilitates trade. We have super market. The trade is between the producers of food and the people who are hungry, right? We have the real estate market. The trade is between the people who make houses and the people who don't wanna live outside. You have the car market, people who need a ride and people who have cars right? A market is just a place that facilitates trade. Now you can approach that market as a consumer and you can do a lot of things when you're in a market, right? You can buy something that you want right now. You can buy something that you won't need until later. Hmm. So what do you do? You go to the supermarket. I'm hungry right now. Well, which section are you going to? I'm going to the deli because they can make me a sandwich that I can eat right now. I'm going to trade my money for food right now. What else can you do? Well, I heard they were having a sale on steaks. So I'm going to go stock up the freezer. So I'm going to buy these steaks now for hunger I won't have for months. As long as I keep them frozen, I'm in good shape. What is that? Both of those were trades. But what changed? What changed was when you needed the payoff. So people say, uh, what do you do in the market? Well, some people invest. That means they'll put some money in now and they won't use it until they're 60, right? Some people, quote unquote, trade. That means that I'm going to put my money up now and I'm going I'm to I'm eat it in 60 minutes, you know, like I'm, I'm going to get mine now. So trading makes your price of your investment is the difference between trading and investing. Now, what kind of trading you can do when you go to the market? Same thing. If you go to the supermarket, everybody imagine that. Close your eyes right now. You listen to Tayo's dope podcast. He got Jay the Trader on. You got your eyes closed. Where if you're driving, open up your eyes because, bro, you're driving. But if you're listening to this somewhere, just imagine you go to your supermarket. What's in there? You got the deli, the bakery, produce. You have dairy. You have the meat section. You have the pharmacy. You have the checkout counter, customer service. You have all these sections of the market right? And our financial markets are the same way. If you go in, you have futures and you have commodities and you have equities and you have indices and you have uh, currencies and cryptocurrencies and you have all these different areas that you can trade. 
Well, if you go into your supermarket and you say, I want something red from the produce section, I might say, great, red from the produce section. Man, I don't know if they want red potatoes. I don't know if they want a bell pepper that's red. I don't know if they want red carrots. I don't know if they want an apple. You say, well, I want something sweet and red. Oh, man. Cool, that narrows it down. So I know that you don't want potatoes, but maybe you want a sweet apple or a sweet bell pepper. You might say, hey, do you want a fruit or a vegetable? You'll say, yeah, I want a fruit. Okay, cool. Well, here's an apple. It's from the produce section. It's red and sweet. So you might say to yourself, that's how you find an apple in the market. You might say to yourself, well, what do I want to do? Well, I want to be able to make money on my own terms. Okay, so I'll participate in the market. What do you want to do? Well, I don't need the money until I'm 60. Okay, so you're more of an investor than a trader. What do you want to invest in? Well, I want to invest in things that I know and I love technology. Well, let's take you to the tech sector. Do you want to do, you know, investing in one company or maybe a couple of them to hedge your bets? And you might say, well, I think a couple of them to hedge my bets. Hey, there's a product for you. You can be an uh, investor in the NASDAQ because they have a whole lot of tech companies in there. The tech company pretty much runs the NASDAQ and you can kind of go in and you can invest in the NASDAQ. And it's the same thing. We go to markets to facilitate trade. Whether we need the money now or later will depend on whether we'll be an investor or a trader. And we should trade what it is that we know, what it is we have a desire for. If you want something fruity, you go to the produce section and you grab a fruit. If you want something pecky, you go to the market and you grab a tech. It's the same vibe. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, with you, you specifically trade in the bond markets. Is that correct? Yes. I'm a futures trader. So you go to the markets, you go to the future section, and then you go to the interest rate futures. There are a lot of different interest rate futures, the five year, the 10 year, uh, and then of course the ultra bonds and uh, the minis, and you have some other things that you could do. But then there's this one called the 30 year treasury bond. Now that's my guy. That's the one that I love. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a futures trader, more specifically, the interest rate futures. And even in the interest rate futures, most specifically, the 30-year treasury bond. What are your thoughts on what's happening now? I mean, we have the great resignation. We yeah. have high inflation. I love it. Yeah, high I love infl- it. yeah, high inflation. So people are it. either coming up with the idea, well, I've got to find a way to save yeah. money and my money keeps losing value or I want to <laughs> do something for my passion. Oh, then mm-hmm. there's a pandemic. I- I'm mm-hmm. just playing, you know, the devil's advocate here to provide you with all these barriers that I know you hear all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Someone comes to you that, well, what do you say? Like, I don't have the money to put into this. What, what would you say? Well, I'll say this. Do you think that Warren Buffett uses his money or somebody else's? Ah. When you look at these people, Paul Tudor Jones, Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, Elon Musk, um, these people are giants, titans of industry. You feel me? Like titans. Titans. They move billions at a time but they have this little acronym after the money that they make. It's A-U-M, and it stands for Assets Under Management. They don't trade their money. They don't invest their money. They invest other people's money, OPM, right? So I always say, hey, you don't have enough money for this, but nobody told you to do it with your money anyways. Mm. The greatest people that invest in trade, they don't do it with their money. They do it with other people's money. The retirement fund for the police officers of New York City might go to a firm and say, hey, manage our retirement fund. Our retirement fund is $500 million. And then that company manages the, so what, are, are they using their money or somebody else? Okay, cool. How do you use somebody else's? Well, I teach my students how to do the same thing. Yeah, you don't have money to trade, but if you know how to do what I know how to do, they'll throw money at you. You'll feel like a stripper. You'll feel like- <laughs> you feel, feel like, like a stripper. <laughs> you'll feel like a stripper. He said up. you feel like a stripper. <laughs> People throw money at you, bro. If you know how to do, like if you can increase your account even 1% a day, they'll throw money at you. They'll throw it at you. and. We make the type of money every day. Like we're not increasing our account by one percent. Like trust me, you okay. know what I'm saying. Like today, the trade I called on the ES was the bottom of the ES after the cash open. I bought. I told my team buy thirty nine. We ain't been back. You know what I'm saying. So uh. if you buy thirty nines with what I tell you how to do, you talking about having four, five hundred thousand, two thousand dollars days with one contract. So it, it, the game is to be told and not sold. It's a. It's a really. It's a magnificent game once you know how to play it and you see how people making that money. 
Kyle, I'm telling you, you'll look at it, you'll go, oh, God. Like, <laughs> that's what they're doing? Oh, this is easy. I got to do this. Well, well that, that, how can people, you know, learn about what you're up to? Because you, now you, you've, you've gotten them excited. They will be like, okay, <laughs> how do I get involved with Jada Trader? What is Jada Trader? Oh, well, you, you know, like, follow me on all social platforms. First and foremost, the idea, if you want to know the game, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to know the rules. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to come in here and play it yet. Come in here and let me tell you a little bit more about the game. Can I do every? Can I talk about everything on here? Yeah, like Tayo, he he's gonna get me to open up. I'm gonna tell you a lot of good stuff, so keep on listening. But if you really want to know the rules, hang out because I'm gonna tell you the rules. I'm gonna tell you how to play, when to buy, when to sell, what makes the market go up, what makes it go down. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's just your job to play out how you want to play it. You know, I teach my students how to find the buyers in the market and how to find the sellers in the market. You know what happened with our markets these days is that they became way less normal. The way the normal market works is that people talk to people and haggle over the value of an item so that they can create an exchange, right? So our supermarkets don't teach us, but they used to. Now our car markets are better to understand how buyers and sellers relate to one another and what haggle. facilitates right. Yeah. It's the facilitation of a trade that creates that. If I know you have something that is $10 of value and I can get it from you for $5, I just got the better of the trade because I know it's a $10 value item. But see, you might only need $2. So if I, if I pay you five for it, you think, shoot, I only needed two and he gave me five. I made out three bucks better than all I needed. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can create win-wins in the market. It's worth five. I can get it for, I mean, it's worth 10. I can get it for five and all you needed was two. So you can create these situations, how you can look at the market. I, I show my students how to do it all day. It's super simple. Yeah, people can always learn from me, man. Um, they can learn. If they visit uh, www.tradelikej.com, they'll see. If they visit me on social, J underscore the underscore trader, T-R-A-D-E-R, -E yeah. at, uh, you know, on Instagram or on YouTube, you can find me. I'm sure in the show notes, uh, Tayo will have information about it here. 100%. But the whole thing is, this is not an impossible game. Listen to me very well. And if this is all you get from the podcast, understand me very closely. Like, listen right here. I'm a keyboard player from Miami, Florida, that learned how to look at some candles on a chart, retired his wife. Right now, like, it's, it's really crazy over here. Like, if, I, if we start talking numbers, they get really ridiculous over here. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I fly, I don't fly regular. When I, when I vacation, I don't vacation regular people. And I'm not saying this for a point of pride, but what I'm saying is there was one point when I didn't know what the market was and then I blinked basically. You know, it took a few years, I would say for me to become as consistent as I am right now. Uh, but I, I get to a masterful level, like my students get to masterful levels in about 60 to 90 days. They're masters at what they particularly know how to do. Um, and man, just knowing one thing, you can go to the Hall of Fame with one shot. You know what I'm saying? Like the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, if you look at his highlights, they aren't really highlights. It's just a guy turning around doing a sky hook. And he went all the way to the Hall of Fame with one shot. One. Steph Curry is not a slam dunk slasher. That is not what that guy does. But he will go to the Hall of Fame for the three-point shot. So mm. all you have to know how to do is, but I, you know, one thing, you don't have to know everything the market is going to do. Just know the one thing. And that one thing, trust me, you'll retire yourself. You'll retire your spouse. You'll laugh at your boss. When you go on vacation, it'll be really, really different. When you go to the bank, people no longer call you by your first name. They'll call you by Mr. or Miss, and they'll call you by your last name. They might even offer you drinks. <laughs> Things what? get really, really different. Yeah, I, I want a lot of people to feel this difference. But one of the things that I, I have to ask, one of the things I have to ask is, how do we get these types of education, you know, to, you know, the hood, the 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 the, the areas where they are marginalized? How do you get it anywhere? Yeah. How do you get it anywhere? How do we like, systemize this it? This is the game. How do we systemize right? it? So here we go. You give the bank the money, right? Say you bank with Wells Fargo, Deutsche. Uh, JP, maybe you're with Chase, maybe you're with B of A, whoever, you give them the money. They get the money and then they have 
they're doing this with it. What I'm doing, they're investing in real estate with it. They're doing all kinds of stuff with it. They're lending it out. Fractional reserve lending allows a dollar to be lent upon 10 times before any law is broken. So literally $100 becomes 1,000 for a bank. They can borrow it and lend it out and they can lend to one another. Okay, so, okay, now listen. How do we systemize this was the question. What I'm gonna tell you is, it's already systemized. You, you just, you're not in the equation, okay? <laughs> That's all. They wanted reading, writing, arithmetic, a little bit of the arts, theater, some of the liberal arts, maybe some of the practical life applications, things that they call life skills, wood, wood uh, shop class, carpentry, HVAC. These are the education things that they want to show you. They don't want to show you how to manipulate money how to turn a dollar into five. Where, where do you put it in order to make it do that? They don't want to teach you this. But what I'm telling you is that there's a great shift that is happening. You uh, talked about the great resignation this year. And I love that they're calling it that. The shift from me trusting a job to pay me to me trusting myself to create value where anybody will pay me is the new thing that's happening in the world. People are going to divest from four-year education or the, the hollow halls of uh, your greatest institution. They're going to divest from that because it costs $200,000 to do. And after you finish and get the paper, we don't even know if you're going to have a job. So people don't want to do that. And they're going to say, hey, there's, a, there's somebody over here that will teach you how to start a, sh a, a Shopify store. And it costs $1,000. I'm going to do that. They're going to say, hey, Tyler has a podcast and he brings on entrepreneurs. I'm having a little tough time in my business, but this entrepreneur looks exciting. So I'm going to listen to that. They're going to learn from secondary and tertiary places. This is a part of the great resignation. It is people's individual right to say that I believe that I can create enough value in the marketplace where people will come and do business with me directly. Like I could be someone who works for this company doing HR, or I could work as a freelance HR person for small businesses, and I can do my HR services for eight businesses. And now I have eight clients that pay me to do their HR because it's the skill that I used to have, but now COVID taught me I can work remotely. I can work remotely and other people are asking for my help. Not only am I going to do HR for other people, but I'm going to teach a course on how to do HR. So now I'll have eight clients, plus I'll have a business for myself. And this is how we're going to rock out for the next, I think, 30, 40 years before there's another economic migration of value. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm seeing it, uh, you know, I call it the great wealth transfer as well, because uh, there's, there's a lot of transfer of wealth. And for those listening, I really want you to take a lot of what Jay's saying. So if, if, if we're going to le uh, live to the ethos of this podcast, which is use your difference to make a difference, take this knowledge that you're, you're learning and pass it on to someone else. You, you know, compare the value. You, you, you know, Jay talked about $200,000 worth of education versus maybe $1,000. You know, when you do the opportunity cost, you know, for four years or four weeks, right? It, it, it's so different. Right. And, and you have to be able to be, uh, be able to think that type of long term, but also put yourself in that equation that Jay was talking about. And I, I really think if we spread the information the right way, which is why I was excited to have you on. Mm -hmm. And I think if people can see people that look like us doing this, it's also going to get people to feel like they can do it as well. I mean, we saw I'm, I'm a huge you can you audience can't see me here, but I'm a huge sports fan. Uh, I guess specifically, I, I you're from Miami. I have my I have a LeBron's Heat jersey over there. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, see, I, see I see but, the six in the in the deuce tray. Yeah, but but the, the, the thing is, a lot of you know, throughout the the time, you know, maybe it was music like you, right, or sports like like my my favorite thing. I wanted to be an athlete for the longest time. Oh, really? I, yeah, I couldn't make it. I just didn't make it. But I, I was I was good. What be a what, uh, what did you play or what did you do? What did you? Uh, well, <laughs> I I played basketball and then I was oh, like. Sweet. It's like shoot, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll be a, a point guard. But then you know, I never grew. Then I was like a shooting guard, and I played. I started playing more like forward because I had to put more size. But I'm six one. I can't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, be Yo. tough to be an NBA forward at six one. 
Yeah, I know. Can you imagine? I'll be the shortest forward ever. Even Draymond Green is not. <laughs> but, uh, but at some point, though, you know, you like you, a lot of my, my skill set lean towards the, you know, the arts, writing, speaking, consulting, all that. But yeah. I want people to be able to recognize that you can turn anything into value. Your HR example is so powerful. Yeah. You, can, you might have studied it. No experience is wasted. You then turn it into something that is yeah. a revenue generating generating machine for you that you can like systemize yeah. <laughs> for other people, right? Yeah. Turn your 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 skill set into an education platform for others, essentially. Yeah. So um, everybody's that, always yeah. in the trade, Tyle. Even professional yeah. athletes. You're oh yes, trade. you see what they're doing. Trade. They're becoming <laughs> investors. The, 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 the smartest athletes and the smartest. Uh, are becoming VCs. They're what I'm saying is, what yeah. I'm saying is that they've always been like, uh, and but, everybody but, around them. If always they, are, are they? Are they always, always been? Not, always. not all the no time. Matter, no matter what, you're always in a trade. Dig oh, it. that's this your argument. That's your argument. You're that's your always argument. in a trade, right? Mm. This is the trade that they were in before. Hey, Tom Brady, you can throw a ball. <laughs> I, I'm Robert Kraft. I'll pay you to throw a ball for me. Yeah. As long as you throw it good, I'll make lots of money and I'll pay you some out of the lots I make. I see what you're and saying. He got hired in the ex- like because it's all about exchanging value. Even right now, your listeners are in a trade. Yes. They're giving us their time for our information. If our information is valuable, we get more of their time. If it is not valuable, they turn away. That's the trade. It no. is value of information for time. for time. And it's the same thing for a professional athlete. As long as that athlete can play, they will be paid. The moment they can't play anymore, they get traded, fired, or have to retire. No, they're That's indispensable. Right. No, they're indispensable at that moment. But no, you're right. I, what I was trying to say is athletes are more, they're thinking more like owners these yes. days. So yes. it's that is that has not always been the case, even for the great for wealth life. transfer. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. The great, like maybe Jordan did it, right? He figured it out early with with the uh-huh. Jordan brand, but not everyone else did. Then LeBron, you know, KD, Steph, mm-hmm. all these people are becoming, you know, owners of, of yes. other things. And and yes. obviously, I'm actually very curious to see what the uh, the next collection uh, collective bargaining is going to be like between the owners and the players, because I know now they're gonna. Shift they're gonna back. want more. Yeah, they're gonna they're, want more. Yeah, but they don't. I think the owners have more of the leverage. But I still think the best players will still be able to do that. But I'm because if if Ben Simmons and all these people can start saying I'm not gonna play out my contract, they're gonna have to. I find dis- exactly. Ways. I yeah. disagree. Whoever's the closest to production of value has the most control of the transaction. You you, you, you think the owners are not gonna put some clause? I don't think LeBron's and those like the best players are going to be fine. This but if you're Ben before. Simmons, if you're Ben this, Simmons, that is not yet the best. Go back in time. Forget about that. Don't talk about the NBA. Talk about the ABA. Now talk yeah. about the control of value and what players did in order to find a better situation for themselves. Because people are always going to try to find a better situation. The reason why the person leaves the HR job is not because it's a bad job. It's because they have a better way to make the money that they were going to make anyway. Let's just do a uh, thing with you in the audience right now. Yeah. Hey, audience, if you uh, could make $50,000 sleeping or $50,000 working on a railroad, which would you rather do? Rather you, know, do? You, you did a sleeping for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's not the money, but it's what I have to do to get it. Mm. Okay. So you'll leave the HR job making $100,000 and you'll work for yourself. Uh, let's just say you got two clients in a company and you make $100,000. Well, now you work on your own time, you have freedom to go to your kids' events, so it, it presents a better opportunity. The reason why I think that the players have more control is because they are the creation of value. No one wants to see the owners dribble. No, I mean, I, I agree that's with that. the power. That, that's right, right there is where the power is. So the over time, it won't happen in one season or two, but over time, what happens is people are taking the power back of the transaction. Just look at what's happening in education. Look at what's happening in currency, the decentralization of it. Look at what's happening when it comes down to creating content. 
it used to be the only place you can get news was seven o'clock at Ted Koppel, the ABC Nightly News. Now you can get it on Instagram and you'll get it better from more angles and more quickly. You see, mm -hmm. you get better news about who's doing what from Shade Room than you can from that show that won't air like Entertainment Tonight. Like yeah. Entertainment Tonight is what Shade Room was. If Entertainment Tonight was smart, they would have started the Instagram account that did what they did, watch celebrities all day. You yeah. see, every time whoever's closer to the value or the creation of value has the most control over the transaction. No, I mean, these, these are good. I, I mean, I just, you know, I'm a huge sports fan. I hope you're right. And yeah, I just know at this time we're talking, I know a lot of like the MLB is on mm -hmm. strike right now. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, I, it's all about, well, who was going to get the leverage? So I'm always, I, I hope you're right where, you know, people that create the value are able to dictate what they're doing. I love that it's happening in college sports with the NIL and on all these things. So you know, I'm always on the side of the, of, of the person creating value. So I hope you're exactly. right. I hope you're right. But, I mean, just look at what we did to our owners generations ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see, you see, like black folks, we had owners, but we created the value. Mm -hmm. So we said a collective bargaining agreement is what we needed to come to. We found the opportunity. And over time, we got rid of our owners. And we're able to then establish value for ourselves using the skills that we possess. So this slave who had no name was the blacksmith. So he became Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith married a woman and she became Mr. Smith and we have the Smith family, generations and generations moving forward. You see what you knew how to do that created value for someone else, now you can do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You just get rid of the owner. Jay out here preaching. Okay. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure you're not? You, I know you go by Jay the Trader. I don't know if it's Jay the Preacher, but you know, if it's, <laughs> but okay. Okay. I, we're getting ready to close, but I got to ask you this question. Okay. That, I want you to go back in time to the moment you realized you wouldn't have to worry about money anymore. What did wow. that feel like? What did that feel like? I almost cried. Yeah. But I didn't. But I almost did. And I think the only reason I didn't cry is because. I was all cried out. Um, my mother was a cancer survivor for years until she finally passed away in 2008, my, bio, my biological mother. Sorry. And I think that that took me so emotionally far that I could not then find another reason to cry. I really haven't cried very deeply since. Um, but um, what I felt like was that I could breathe. Like I realized that the skills that were in my head and in my hand meant that every day, no matter what, I was going to make money. Yeah. And it didn't depend on anybody else. It only was me. And that felt great. That felt fantastic. Um, I remember that day like it was yesterday, bro. And it was really, really good. It was fun. And then immediately, like almost immediately, I felt a sense of responsibility. I think. As people, we always are thinking about the people we love. And I felt like I walked into a room and I was the only one there. Mm. None of my friends knew, none of my family knew. And then immediately it became my responsibility to get everybody I could find into that room. The room that you knew no matter what, like I'm, I'm, gonna, make, I'm gonna make money today. I can choose how much I wish to make, like that's it. You know what I'm saying? It was so, it was incumbent upon me. Like I felt this, pr like a huge, hey, Jay, the next thing you got to do, now that money's not an issue. The, I mean, the immediate next thing you got to do is to get everybody to where money's not an issue. So like, bro, I pre like you say, Jay, the preacher, like I preach it from the mountaintops. You can do it. Yeah. Maybe it won't be trading. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll be basket weaving. But I'm going to tell you, the value that you have, the knowledge that you have is the value you can create. Maybe you make pies. I'm gonna tell you, there was another lady who made pies. What eventually happened to her pie company was the Cheesecake Factory. Yes. There's another lady who made pies. What eventually happened to her pie company? Mrs. Fields. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know, hey, what do you do? Now do it for yourself and do it for people. You're a speaker. Go speak.
you're a rapper go rap yeah go create value go create what somebody else is dreaming about man if somebody would only say this to me they don't even know they need it but if you gave it to them they would say oh that's exactly what i needed to hear for me to move my life into the next situation i was just waiting for someone to unlock that and you're somebody else's miracle bro sis Whoever listening to this, like you are that miracle. Your knowledge that you take for granted, you think everybody knows how to make a hat? You think everybody can just raise kids? You think everybody just knows how to stay married? You have the skill. Guess what you need to do? Share it. How do you share it? Go provide value for someone else. Get in the trade. Stop being on the buy side of the trade and start being on the sales side of the trade. Mm. What are you going to sell? The knowledge in your head, the skill in your hand, the passion in your heart. You're going to sell it. And guess who's going to buy it? The people who need the knowledge, the That's people right. who want the skill, and the people who will be inspired by the passion. Trust me, we buy things that no, people can't see all the time. Everybody's going to see Spider-Man. That script was in somebody's head. We're buying someone's wildest dream thoughts. You go to a theme park. I went to a theme park for Christmas last year. I rode the ride, the Harry Potter ride. The yeah. Harry Potter ride was in a lady's mind. It was a book. Yeah. And the book became a ride I can literally ride on. You never know what the little thought that you have for the little character that your kid drew. You never know that little character. Bro, it could be Star Wars. You could be looking at an the next Anakin. Why don't you draw it? Why don't you write it? Why don't you create it? Why don't you do it? Why don't you take your fear and put it aside just to, for long enough for you to believe in yourself till the first person buys it? Just don't worry about the million dollars. Just get the first sale, just the first one. Get your pride out of the way, get your fear out of the way and get to the first thing, man. I, man, Tayo, I'm so into that. I believe in that so highly because hey, trading is cool, but maybe you're not a trader. That's cool. Investing is cool. Maybe you're not an investor. That's cool. Maybe what you do is make the best chicken anybody ever tasted. And everybody who eats your chicken says, this chicken is the best. Guess what you need to do now? Find all the chicken you can find and go fry it. Give it away. Fry it every day. Fry your best chicken every day. And guess what? Someone is going to come along and they're going to say, this is the best chicken I've ever had. I've been waiting for a new chicken place. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to make you a restaurant. It'll be the first of its kind. It's going to be called Your Chicken. And we're going to sell it frozen and already ready to be baked in the oven at the local grocery store. And we're going to sell it ready to be um, eaten at this restaurant. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have chicken frying classes online and in person, chicken frying uh, for people to eat and chicken frying freeze dry for people who just want to bake it on the go. Ready? Break. Go, go, go. Move out of the way. Move your fear. Our forefathers quite literally ran out away from harm and danger, chasing a star so that they can get to a place that they have never seen, but only heard of called freedom. That is the stock you come from. If you are black, if you are white, guess what? Your folks left on a, a big old horizon and everybody thought that y'all was gonna fall off the side of the earth, but your folks got in a boat and they, they went towards the horizon until they found another piece of land and they called it the new world and they conquered it. So if you black, you come from good conquering unknown places. And if you white, you come from good conquering unknown places too. There is no, not one excuse that you can use for not, you know, going after what you know you can do. Just go do it. And, and if you need any help, holler at Jay. <laughs> bars you know trade like jay.com i usually end the podcast with asking my guests how they use their difference to make a difference but i mean you just gave a whole sermon over there so you know we clip it out that's how he uses his difference to make a difference he's spreading out the knowledge please if i if out. i can stretch it one more second if, you, if please, i was please, to answer please, that please. question yes go ahead i live by two words in fact i have two things on my body that uh weren't there when i was born i have one brand on my left shoulder and i have one tattoo on my left chest 
mm -hmm. on the, the left side of my chest over my heart. My brand is in the shape of the Greek letter Omega, mm -hmm. right? And then the tattoo, it's two words. It's uh, two words and a symbol. I have grow and then a plus that looks like a cross and then serve. So how do you do it? How do you do it? You grow and you serve. See, the thing is, you're going to get to a room where nobody else is. Like maybe your business is the one in the family that actually works. Mm -hmm. You grew. Hey, maybe you're the one who has a car and nobody else does. You grew. Hey, maybe you're the only one in your family that didn't go to jail. You grew. Maybe you're the only one that finished college. You grew. Hey, maybe you're the one that finally got the job on, uh, like everybody wanted. You grew. That's cool, but it's only one half of the puzzle. You grow, and then the next thing you do is you serve. The words tattooed on my chest and the words that I live by are grow and serve. Climbing is good, but lifting while you climb is better. Yeah. Making it is good, but what's better than one billionaire? Two. <laughs> Jay, yo, for those that don't get that reference, you, you need to listen to some Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> we got to serve. The reason Tyo got this podcast is not because he needs knowledge. It's because he wanted to serve by sharing it. You see? You see, it's the vibe. The vibe ain't make it. The vibe is help other people make it. You grow and you serve. So guess what you should do right now? If you're listening to this, there's going to be a square with the arrow pointing up on your iPhone device. That's how you share this podcast. So what you do is you post it to your Facebook timeline or you share it with five friends that you love. Why? Because Teo's bringing good people and good knowledge to you. He's helped your life. That's why you're sitting here listening. You follow him and you share his platform. Why? Because he helped you grow. What do you do when, after you grow? You share. You serve. How do you serve? By sharing, by helping, by teaching, by building a bridge, by helping. Hey, man. Hey, my little nephew was interested in building businesses. And this is a podcast show you how to do better for yourself. Hey, my little nephew, my little niece was interested in trading. She was talking about something with the market and the Bitcoin. Hey, it was somebody on this podcast. Share it. If you go to a good movie, you tell everybody. If you go to a dope restaurant, you come home. Oh, y'all need to try this place. This is the dopest place in the city. You know, if you buy some new J's, now they're the hottest thing. You posting them on Instagram. You sharing it. You trying to get likes and hearts. But if you find knowledge, you want to keep it to yourself. Shame on you. Let me tell you the J to trade away. Let me tell you the to tie your way. Once we find the room and ain't nobody else in it and it's a dope room, we don't lock the door behind ourselves. We, we take the door off the hinges and we put a big neon sign up over and say, y'all come over here. And then we stand outside the door and yell, y'all need to come over here. This is where the growth is. This is what we're doing. And I challenge you to do that. Grow and serve. It's the way. Let's do it. Oh, gosh. My God. I'm so hyped right now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jay. This has been a true pleasure. Um, I, I really, I love how you broke it down. Thank you for Thank sharing you. your story. Please, please check out TreyLikeJay.com. We'll put out his Instagram, put out all his socials out there. But, you know, check it out. You've heard every single thing. You know, he, he gave you every reason for you to bet on yourself and, and, and play the odds of life so that you can, you know, do what you want to do, achieve that freedom that you deserve. So thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming to the show. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Much love to you, bro. Much love. Right back at you. Kings, queens, and royalty. Till next time, use a difference to make a difference.